Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together this morning as we continue on in this study. We ask that you grant us the presence of your Holy Spirit to pour your latter rain out upon us and those people that uh, will be considering these presentations. Ask a blessing upon the work that's going on here in terms of live streaming and recording this message. Please take control of um, the thoughts of Odilio and myself as we try to convey this this study in a way that would glorify and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. I will try by our, our next presentation to bring in a quote that has been in my notes in the recent series about Sister White saying that something along the order concerning the message that was established by the Millerites that they had the truth and it was testified to by the miraculous working of the power of God or, or something along that line. I use that quote. Um, and as I've proceeded through these presentations, suggesting that we need to um, evaluate, look at these time patterns, I'm saying these time powder patterns are our manifestation of the miraculous working of the power of God that parallels what went on in Millerite history. We had a message, they had a message, but the Lord was also confirming that message by external things that were external to the message to prove that it was right. So Dilio is going to start here with, with the, the point where we actually get into serious consideration of time in the future. But I want to remind us that the starting point for our time setting comes from Hiram Edson's articles. Hiram Edson never recognized that he was identifying a chiasm, but he was. And when that truth was opened up to us in 2005, um, we immediately thereafter saw this chiasm of 19 years from 742 to 723 B.C., onward 46 years to 677 B.C., and then when those three waymarks reach their, reach their conclusion at the end of the world, you have 1798, 1844, and we couldn't escape the fact that it projected off to 1863. And there were a multitude of um, histories that were prophetic histories that were fulfilled in 1863. So you couldn't get away from the idea that 1863 was the conclusion of this chiastic structure. Um, we had. James White and Adventism setting aside the 2520 in an article, replacing those two tables with uh, the 1863 chart. Uh, we had the history of Jericho. Um, as you approach 1863, James and Ellen White are going to lose both their firstborn and their lastborn child in agreement with the, the prophecy of Jericho being rebuilt. Um, uh, that corresponded to 1863, and their oldest son in 1863, Cotton died sleeping on uh, the production of those 1863 charts um, that were drying. Um, we also saw the center of the Civil War on the external level, and we saw the arrival of the health message um, in connection with a passage in the spirit of prophecy that we'd understood about turning points. At turning points, uh, there's a crisis in the history of the nation of the church. When, the, when these crises arrive, the light for that time is given. The light for 1863 was the health message. It was a turning point in the history of the United States. They were in the middle of the, of the Civil War. It was a turning point for the church because they were setting aside the old past. And that, that 1863 waymark, uh, we understood, was the beginning of the troubling of William Miller's jewels. The first truth of his jewels was being set aside. So when we seen this chiastic structure that extended out to 1863, we didn't recognize at that point in time that we were time setting because the passages in the spirit of prophecy that uh, put a restriction upon time setting uh, apply to 1844. And here we were um, marking 1863. And as that truth continued to develop um, from Daniel chapter 5 and William Miller's dream. We recognized 126 shekels from 1863 to the time of the end in 1989, and, and it, it just began to snowball with what we were seeing. 
So it's, it's upon that premise that we started time setting without knowing it around 2005, 2006 time period. And that as we were going through this study, which I gave the introduction in which Odilio's taking us a little bit different, the point where it gets um, pretty convicting in, in, from my perspective is here at these two Italian camp meetings where we begin to see that this camp meeting and this camp meeting are tied together, if nothing else, from the Sabbath. The Sabbath gets opened here at 9-11. It gets closed here at 9-11. Uh, but these time symbols of 120, 126, um, and 391 are here in this first Italian camp meeting. They project into the second Italian camp meeting. And now they begin to project well into the future of when we were understanding it back here out to November 9th. And this history continues to develop in our understanding. But Italy, Italy is a doubling, midnight cry. And these lines here line up perfectly with the work of Samuel Snow in the Midnight Cry in Millerite history, how we could possibly look at that evidence and uh, not be convicted that the Lord is speaking to us at, at some level here. I don't know how people can, can overlook that. If you haven't looked at uh, Brother Daniel's presentation um, from two days ago, uh, where he... he fairly um, soundly identified uh, from my understanding that once we get to 9-11 that the seven thunders are going to be opened up. That's where they were sealed up. They were sealed up on August 11th, 1840 when the mighty angel came down. Uh, in Millerite history when the mighty angel comes down in our history at 9-11 then the seven thunders that have been sealed up in Millerite history are unsealed um, and August 11th, 1840, when they were sealed up, it was a point where the rule that was the most important rule for the Millerites was being confirmed, the day-year principle. And 9-11, the rule that's most important to our history is that Millerite history is repeating in our history. So when we get to 9-11, this is confirmed for us, and we see they were having the seven thunders sealed up, we're having the seven thunders unsealed, and the seven thunders that are unsealed in our history um, take us to a period of time uh, where in Millerite history the proclamation is time shall be no longer. In our history uh, there is a reversal. We've now reached the point to where in Millerite history there had been a restriction up until 1798 on proclaiming the judgment near. Um, that restriction was removed and the message of the judgment near for the Millerites had an element of time. And at 9-11, the restriction was removed on us because we have a message about judgment as well. And our message isn't about that the judgment of the dead is going to begin. Our message is about the judgment of the living has begun at 9-11. So Daniel put a very um, solid a piece of logic in to our understanding that at 9-11 and beyond, which in 2005 we're going to discover the 2520. Um, the restriction has been removed, and here we are approaching this date. Um, we are behind schedule on understanding this, I am certain. Um, this date is just one. Uh, we're seeing July 18, 2020 as uh, a strike by Islam in the United States that is going to begin several things. It's going to begin the image of the beast testing time um, and it's going to begin the period where the United States is going to remove Russia, the king of the south, from prophetic history and respond to Islam uh, in a history that leads over here to December 25th, 2021 um, when Russia uh, will reach its complete demise and potentially even um, a Sunday law follows there or thereafter. But with that introduction, I'll turn it over to Odilio, and we're going to do the same thing we did yesterday. Um, questions from the floor can be uh, asked. Stephen can um, contribute whenever he sees that we're leaving something out, and, and I'll interrupt him occasionally too, probably. Okay. 
So uh, yeah, yesterday we uh, we were discussing uh, these three lines on the board: uh, line of Ezekiel, the line of Jair Lich, and the line of Samuel Snow. We saw some interesting patterns there, uh, pointing towards uh, July 18. The line of Lich, of course, uh, is all about Islam. <coughs> Some most know it's about Midnight Cry. Uh, and especially if we are going to talk about the Italian camp meetings, uh, these patterns sh keep showing up. You see in the line of Ezekiel, you see the 120 and the 391. You see, uh, you see it over here. 120 years for the kings of Judah and the 391. Out. Oh, sorry. You see the 120 over here and the 391.5 after it. And on the line of Litch, you see a 126 and the 391, which you see over here. I have to put the accent on it in red. And in the line of snow, you see both patterns a 120 followed by 391, pointing to July 18, and also uh, a 126, pointing to July 18, followed by 391. Do you see that? Yes. So the same uh, pattern we see in the Italian camp meetings. Uh, if you start at the first camp meeting in 2017, It started on May 28th. No, and it started on June 2nd. The, the but camp there's six days before. Yeah, the, the camp meeting itself started on May 28th. Oh, really? Yeah, and the first Sabbath was on June 2nd, okay. or June 2. Okay. Where you, uh, where Jeff opened the Sabbath, or uh, he, he ended his presentation exactly at 9, 11 p.m., which was sunset on Friday evening, uh, opening the Sabbath. Unintentionally, it, it was not his purpose to end on 9, 11, but it happened to be exactly 9, 11. So that's interesting uh, to notice that we see here a six between the first day and the, and the Sabbath, and then Symbolically, a 120, because 120 is a symbol of, the Pent of Pentecost. And you were talking about Pentecost, I remember. Yeah, talking about 9-11, I mentioned Pentecost, but June 2nd was Pentecost. Yeah, June 2nd, of course, is the sixth day of the third month, bibli biblically, <laughs> which is Pentecost. Which gives, gives us a, a symbolic 120. Uh, followed by 391, we come to June 15, which uh, on the Julian calendar is the second day of the fourth month, which again is <laughs> on the line of seven more snow. The second day of the fourth month is July 18. So we see all these lines ending on July 18. Uh, if we go to the next camp meeting, in it Italy 2018. Um, it's also very interesting. We are now on page 19. Uh, June 9 was the first Sabbath of this camp meeting. And if we add six days, we come to July 15, mm -hmm. uh, June 15, sorry, uh, that we saw on this line. Though this is a Gregorian, that date is Julian. And we, we see from there on a 120 till October 13, which was the date that uh, November 9th was confirmed as being uh, the close of probation for the priest. 
by Theodore Turner. And the feminine was already uh, established by Sister Tess 10 days before, on October 3. Um, and from there, November 9, it's 252 days towards July 18. So also here, if we apply the pattern of uh, 120 or 126 followed by 391.5, we see significant dates showing up. Uh, let me see if there's more to say about this. Um, yeah, if we look at the, at the chiasm of the 126, the exact middle of this chiasm is August 11, which is a symbol for Islam, right? That we see on the line of some of us know, uh, August 11, 1840. And also, um, July 27 was the date when Daniel Machado from Brazil, uh, he had a, uh, he made a prediction that on July, of, on October 13, the midnight cry would be given. And it was, this, his prediction uh, was fulfilled. But he happened to make this prediction on July 27, which is also, of course, a symbol for Islam uh, on the line of Lich that we see over and over again. July 27, July 27, July 27, etc. So we see... Uh, he had that impression that the midnight cry was going to come on October 13th and he wrote it up on an email and then he took a screenshot of the email for whatever reason, so it was recorded. Uh, he's got the picture that he actually put it in place on July 27th. And he really didn't know why he was doing that at that time, but he... He did do that. Yeah. So it's not after the fact that he was making this claim. He, it was noted. And it's interesting that the minute cry was given on, Oct on October 13, because on the line of Ezekiel, uh, the day that Jeroboam was offering on his uh, altars, where we read about the 15th day of the 8th month, two times, uh, happened to be October 13, also. So, 15th day of the 8th month, of course, is a symbol for the Midnight Cry, which makes October 13 a symbol for the Midnight Cry. Right? Yep. Questions? Uh, you mentioned Josiah Lech. Uh, his line, and you highlighted the 126 and the 391. I just thought maybe Josiah Litch would be more associated with the 150, the 150, and then the 391 after that, rather than the yeah. 126. And yeah, but we, do, we don't see a 150 in the Italian chem meetings. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that's all there. Yeah. But a 150 is a 120. We've established that from the 120 days from 9-11 to the midnight cry, uh, which is four months. But it's also the five months of hiding for Elizabeth and those five months and same period of time. So a 150 and a 120 or a 12 and a 15 are interchangeable at that level. So when you're pointing to the 150, 391 over there, it can also be a 120, which is, the 120 is generally isolated from the six. They're looked at together, but they're also distinct. Right. So after these Italian chem meetings, we looked at our own line and we saw that these patterns even apply to our uh, current uh, time uh, where we are uh, living now. And it's 
interesting to see that we can apply the line of samples now in our day and apply the same patterns that we saw, the sixth, the 126 and uh, 391. If we just go from July 18, 2020 and go back 391.5 days, we arrive at June 22, which is a way mark on the line of Samuel Snow, which we see over here, which is Pentecost. And again, from there, if we go back 120 days, we arrive at May 2nd, which was also a way mark on the line of Samuel Snow, which we see over here, which was Passover. And at the same time, it's uh, April 19, Julian, which you also saw on the line of snow over here, which is the center of a chiasm. And again, <coughs> um, if we go back 120 from June 22, we arrive at February 22, and six days from there is February 16, which is also a waymark on the line of Samuel Snow. So we see all the waymarks of Samuel Snow we see on this line by just applying the pattern of uh, 126, 120 fo followed by 391.5. Do we see that? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty yeah, profound, as you would say. Right? Uh, it's divine. Yeah, this cannot be a coincidence. Um, <coughs> and June twenty second is a a date that where we received the money for this school, and three years later, we're presenting Ezra seven nine in a camp meeting for the first time on June twenty second. So it's a date that's also just part of the story of this school right. so that is on that line. The only way mark we do not see on this line is uh, June 27. Uh, we, see it, we see it on this line as one of the dates that uh, the third letter of Samuel Snow was published, June 27. But we, d we do not see it on this line. It should be, it should be here somewhere. But we, we do not see it. <coughs> so this you don't know, I think back in the day, <coughs> we, you don't have to have every single waymark on these lines. You just have to have enough to where you know it's going to fit. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's making a different point. Okay. Yeah. Well, but he's not there yet. Oh, okay. So, but, uh, yeah, I hear what you say. And... But this has a special reason that it is not there, that we will see later on. So even this has a, a purpose. And then uh, you'll see uh, what, what I'm talking about. But <coughs> I made a typo on page 20. In, in the middle it says, uh, With the exception of May 3 and June 27, it should be May 2, of course. Do you see it? Yep. Yeah. It should be, should be May uh, 2nd. Center of the page 20. And then again, it, it says... May, it says May, May 3 instead of May 2nd. Twice on the page. It should be changed to May 2nd. May 3rd should be changed to May 2nd. All right. Um, yeah, we can go to the next page, page 21, unless there are any questions about this. Well, 
to, it's, it's amazing when you need the testimony of two or three to establish something. We have Ezekiel, then Revelation 9, then Samuel Snow. There's your three witnesses. And then the first Italian camp meeting, second Italian camp meeting, and then our current history are all governed by those same three lines. That's six witnesses. Um, that's pretty strong evidence. Um, about seeing July 18, 2020 or November 9th um, as being established. All right. Come meeting from June 22nd to 391.5 will then actually take you to June 28, Gregorian. Yeah. But then there's no maybe significance in that date, but if you line it up with the Julian date, mm -hmm. then you can see that it does connect to the, the, the last letter by Samuel Snow. Mm -hmm. And then that also then connects to the, the June 15th, the, the, the camp meeting okay. in Italy. Okay, so Interesting. Just, just clarifying that for anyone. So, can you repeat that? He's um, saying the June 15th <coughs> date on the top line, it says June 15th, Julian, is actually on the Gregorian, July 27th? No, no. July uh, 28th? Ju June 28th. June 28th. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, this date. On the Gregorian. It's just if anyone was going to calculate from June 2nd, and it's not, not going to be 391 to June 15, it's going to be, it'll take them to uh, <coughs> June 28, but then we just, from that there, June 28, we uh, we look at the, the Julian date for that there, and we can see that it connects to, to Samuel Snow's uh, letter, which was wrote in July 18. And that June 2nd date up there is 2017, mm -hmm. and it goes to June 28th on the Gregorian, but June 15th on the Julian, 2018. Yes. Okay. Which is down here. And one thing he he didn't mention, but has been mentioned several times, is on the top line, we open Sabbath at exactly 9-11, and it was, Sabbath began in Toro Polici at 9-11, and on the second line, we closed Sabbath at exactly 9-11. Right. And neither one of those were planned. So there's a, just the opening and closing of Sabbath on 9-11, those two years, those two meetings, ties those lines together also. Yeah. You're going to flip it? That date yeah. that you have marked out, is, is that 27 of July? This date? Is it supposed to be 27 July? June. 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 Or June. 27 of June? Right. Oh, okay. You want to flip it? Yes. Are we going to the next uh, page? <coughs> page 21. So, so far we've looked at the uh, line of Ezekiel, uh, Josiah Lich, and some of Snow. And there was an obvious connection between the line of Snow and Lich. Uh, I mean Ezekiel and Josiah Lich. That we saw over here. Uh, so we, we wonder if there's any connection between uh, the lines of Ezekiel and Samuel Snow. And the answer is uh, yes. If we look at the dates of Samuel Snow's letters, they are written over here. We can see all the publishing dates, uh, writing dates of his letters on the top line. And we see all the dates of Ezekiel we see on the, on the bottom line. So at first sight there seems, seems to be no connection. But if we use the date, if you convert the date to a number, then we start to see a connection. Uh, 
So here we have the dates, and if I write June 22nd as a number, which number do I get? 622. 622, eh? And if I do the same with June 27, I'll get 627. Seven. Sorry? Seven, six, as well. Yeah. But do we, do we see a connection now between the two lines? Yes. We see a 622 year and we see a 622 year, right? Mm -hmm. We see a 627 year and a 627 year, right? So I will do all a a small line between them. So we see these ray marks lining up, or I would say connected, they are not lining up. So it's interesting then if we if we mirror this line, if we um, put it backwards, <coughs> right? If you just mirror this line of Ezekiel, <coughs> which we have done here, over here, it's the same two lines, but just with the line of Ezekiel being mirrored. Reverse order. In reverse, reverse order, exactly. Then you see that they line up exactly. The 622 lines up with June 22, and the 627 lines up with June 27. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So again, uh, June 22 we can write as 622, and June 27 we can write as uh, 627. Is that the only two dates on there that connect? Yeah, these are the only two dates that connect uh, directly without doing any uh, mathematical uh, calculations. We have, uh, so to say, a direct hit. But it, c it can be sh shown that all these dates can be connected in one way or another by doing some simple uh, arithmetic, which I will not demonstrate now, but it's a study can be made available on the, on the WhatsApp group if people are interested. But it can be shown that all these dates are connected. But I will just show the, the two that are directly connected and the chance that one direct hit, the chance of one direct hit, is one in about thousand. If you take any number or any date between February 16 and July 18, just randomly, and you pick any year between 586 and 977, uh, chances are one in thousand that you get a direct hit li like this. Or this, and if you if you want two direct hits, chances are uh, one in 1.5 million. So this is pretty rare, a rare situation. It's not, uh, yeah, it's, it's not. How do you say? Doesn't occur very often. So it's important to see that this is, uh, yeah, a a a, a, a rare uh, situation. So we see the lines of snow and Ezekiel corrected, connected in this in this way, and we will uh, use this to go to the next figure. Is is this clear, by the way? Is, does it does it make sense? Good. So if you go to page 22, I uh, try to put it on the right side of the board. What I've tried to do is uh, use these two lines of snow and CQO, <coughs> which you can see here below, and two lines of, uh, of Tess. That she was presenting about Paris and 
the war between Russia and Germany and Russia and the USA. Don't know if you if you remember that. Uh, she was talking about Operation Barbarossa and, and, and Rafia. Do we know uh, something uh, mm -hmm. about that? Um, it was noticed then that on her lines, she never made any comment about it. She never emphasized it, but on two of her lines, <coughs> Operation Barbarossa and uh, Rafia were... Uh, Duan, these dates were both on June 22nd, on June 22, I should say. But you never saw any uh, connection uh, between it. And as you see, it lines up perfectly with the lines of Samuel Snow and Ezekiel, which both were on June, symbolically on June 22nd. So we see a uh, 6 to 2, 6 to 2, 6 to 2, 6 to 2, in all the four lines. Sorry? Okay. Amen. And they are all both, uh, not both, <laughs> they are all, four of them are on the fifth way mark of the seven that we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They are all on the fifth way mark. And five maybe could symbolize wise, wise yeah and foolish or foolish or even pen pe <coughs> or Pentecost even because Pente means five and June 22nd of course is Pentecost on the line of snow right we saw June 22nd June 22 is the sixth day of the third month in the line of snow which is Pentecost do we see that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, what are we to do then with this figure? Uh, we wondered. Because we see July 18, we see July 18 over here, and we see Penium over here, so that does not, not uh, line up. <laughs> what we then did was, um, which you see on the next page, page 23. Why do you need Panium to line up? Because July 18... Yeah, you'd want it to line because up. July 18 is the beginning of Panium. Right. Okay. Why, is it a, why is it the beginning of Panium? Uh, yeah. Good question. I'm just asking that from the point of view, well, do we want July 18th to be Panium, so are we going to force something? Is there some logic about Panium being July 28th that is so yeah, the, secure? The, the idea was that it should, it should at least be in front of Panium or light up with Panium, but it cannot be after Panium. That's the idea. So it seems strange that July 18th would fall after Panium. That was the okay. idea. But anyway, we... So this is the point you were getting to yesterday and that you've mentioned today that your audience needs to be aware of where you're going to tell us that July 27th is redundant. Yeah. Okay, exactly. this is the point. So we... On, on this side of the board, we saw that June 27th was not present on the line, remember? We were wondering why it was not there. Can, can we show it, maybe? I didn't, you can flip it. I didn't tighten those up. Okay. You did? Yeah, I did. There we go. We saw that June 22nd was not present on the line of... Of, uh, of our history. Of our history. We were wondering uh, why it was, so... And the reason is as follows. We see June 27th a year. And we saw, 
And we see it here also, of course. And we saw on the line of snow, we demonstrated this yesterday. Uh, it, it, it's not on the board, but we saw that June 27 was, was the same as, it, it pointed back to June 22. Do, do you remember that? Because June 27 was the 11th day of the third month. Right? And Theodore decided to, to double that. And if he, he added it, you get the 22nd day of the sixth month, which is June 22. So June 27, symbolically, is the same as June 22. So June 27, is symbolically the same as June 22. This is the publishing of his third letter, uh, the writing of his third letter, this is the publishing of his third letter. But symbolically, June 27 is the same as June 22. Do we understand? And you're saying that's pointing forward pen to Paneum, which is the midnight cry where there is a doubling. Uh, now it's saying that Symbolically, they are the same, so we can move June 27 over June 22. That's what I'm trying to, to get at. Well, I'm not arguing against that. I get that. But it's also okay to do it because yeah. that's a doubling. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And the only way you can do it is if you double June 22nd. Yeah, correct. Correct. So we will do the same here. And uh, to rest, uh, what do you want? Oh, just this towel. So if we do the same thing here, we can overlay June 27 on June 22, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the same. Do we agree? Yes, I agree. I'm about, <laughs> about the I people see, uh, answered not a word. I see a thumbs up yeah. from. Uh, so, well, how do you do a way mark? If you have a way mark that has this characteristics, and you find another way mark in prophecy that has the identical characteristics, what do you do? You bring them together. So what he's saying is. June 27th has the identical characteristics as June 22nd, so your responsibility is to bring them together line upon line. What's throwing you is how he, his, his formula for making June 22nd, 7th, the 22nd, by doubling it, but the doubling in this particular waymark should be expected because it's the midnight cry waymark, and you, all, you see many doublings, but it looks like you wanted to say something. Correct. Just sort of touching on what I said yesterday, it kind of fits in. If you connect uh, June 27 as being the 27th of the sixth month, so like a 276, uh, you can then connect that, if you're connecting that then to Raphia, uh, as I said yesterday, from 742 BC um, to 2019, which would be Raphia, right. is 2,760 years. So mm -hmm. you, you're placing that June 27th um, at Raffia. So it's sort of lining up with the, the 622. Right. Thank you. Everyone get that? Sometimes I can restate what he said. This time he lost me. <laughs> try, try it <coughs> again. Okay. Yesterday I stated that at Raffia, you can identify the number 276. Okay. which would be symbolically the 27th of June, the sixth month. So you, you get a 276. From 742 BC, it's 2,760 years to 2019, which would, which we, uh, is this year, which is... So what's 742 BC? 
that's the, big, the beginning of the chiasm of Samuel Snow. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, of the of the twenty five twenty. Of the yeah, her, higher medicine. Yeah. So you're saying the period of time from seven forty two BC to two thousand nineteen mm-hmm. is seventy four sixty. Two seven six. Two seven six zero. Yes. But the two seven six is also a symbol of June twenty seventh. Yes. Therefore, you have the right to put it at Raphia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what I'm going to do is I will overlay June 27 on top of, of Ju- June 22. I'll write it uh, over here. And the same, do the same with the year 627. Mm-hmm. So I can write. So what we did was transferring these, these wave marks uh, w- one position to the left. So if I do this with ju- June 27 and 627, I have to do the same with these wave marks. They all shift one position to the left. Mm-hmm. So. I wipe this. So here we get nine seventy seven and the fifteenth day of the eighth month, of course. So I can wipe this out. And I do the same uh, here. This becomes July 18. And I can wipe this off the board. So if we do this, now we see that after shifting the wave mark one position to the left, we see that July 18 lines up with Pentium, which is, uh, which lines up with 977, which is the midnight cry. So all these wave marks now now match. Do we see that? Mm-hmm. There. Why can you move it back? Because the he's he's eliminated one wave mark. He moved it back to the previous wave mark because they're identical. Right. 22nd. They're both the twenty second of June. So you have to bring them together, and when you do, you're pulling everything back one step. Okay. And and that that answers the critic's question. If the critic wanted to challenge these lines on the left, you have seven waymarks on two lines, but only two of them are direct hits. Although if you get into the you know the intricate math, you can show that they all line up. But there's only two that are direct hits on the left side of the board, yeah. and those two direct hits are the ones that are being emphasized by prophecy that you're going to have to deal with. Yeah. And those two are the ones that are the same waymark, that are going to get brought together as one waymark. Exactly. And this speaks to something that we've dealt with through the years before we had any time patterns. But has all, the, the, the biggest criticism that we've ever received about teaching prophecy comes from those in Adventism, particularly that have a, a an inclination towards the message of Jones and Wagner, where they they believe that the message of Christ's righteousness needs to be simple and easy, and that that's what we're supposed to focus on is Christ's righteousness. And there's a certain element of that that's true, but they never seem to take the next step. and And I don't have the quotes in front of me, but you can get a whole list of passages from the Spirit of Prophecy when it comes to studying prophecy. You have to stretch every nerve and fiber to understand it. So the idea that you that we're at a point now where we're dealing with something that seems a little bit, not a little bit, seems difficult at the first glance isn't something that tells you that this message is wrong. It at least has to be considered because prophetic study is difficult at first glance. 
And that seems difficult at first glance, but if you walk through, if you take this DVD that's being recorded and you walk through his logic a couple times, it clicks on and it's just not that hard to see. What he's did is what we always do. do. He's found two waymarks and then he's taken the time to prove they're the same waymark and therefore your responsibility is to bring them together line upon line. And he's doing it at the waymark that is handling the history of the midnight cry where there's a doubling. So you have you have a secondary justification for all for doing that very thing. Yeah. So but it's also interesting to see that we see uh, two lines of Tess and two lines of Theodore, so to say, connecting Tess and Theodore in a, in a way. Um, which we'll uh, see also later on in the study. Uh, we'll, co we'll come back to that. But that's something to keep in mind that. Why? Uh, Tell him what you mean now. Yeah, so it seems that Tess, he, she talks more about the King of the North, while Theodore's message is, m is somewhat more about Islam, right? Right. So we have the message from the North, message from the East, which we read about in Daniel 11, 40. Good. Four. Four. And uh, we will see that later on also. This connection between the message from the north, message from the east. And, and I think what we're dealing with now, particularly with some of the chats and emails I'm getting, Tess had light on the king of the north, but it gets skewed as they go off on their political activism movement. And the light on Islam it didn't necessarily get skewed, it just never got allowed to come to fruition. So now what we're trying to do is clean up the mess of Tess's presentations that Parminder and Tess took the wrong direction and, and catch back up on the light of Islam and do it very, in a ra very rapid fashion. And I think that's happening uh, from what I'm seeing. So it's about it's about tidings out of the east and the north. And on October 13th last year, you had a testimony of two about November 9th, but one of them, the primary testimony was about Islam, and the other one, the primary testimony was about the king of the north, his story. Yeah. I think that's all there is to say for now about this, and we can go to the next page. Was there any questions? Is there something you wanted to say something about? On here? Page 24, yeah. Um, or we can just go to the document. You want me to say something in advance? Of what, or you go through the document. I'll, All right. I'll follow on after you. Maybe. So we concluded that July 18 has something to do with Panium and with the Minat Cry. <coughs> so, and the 15th day of the 8th month is Jeroboam's counterfeit feast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Ponium, when this study was uh, developed, Ponium had already been um, identified where the king of the south, Russia, will be defeated by the king of the north. So we were wondering at first if July 18 is that particular waymark. Or could there be possibly two separate waymarks that make that make up on him. That was the question we were confronted with. Because ob obviously we have a lot of Islamic Islamic symbology connected with July 18. 
But also we know that Panium is about the battle between the king of the north and king of the south, right? Where the king of the north is defeated by the king of the south, or suffers a defeat. Do you think you're done with this board? The, the back side of the board is uh, empty. Okay, so. keep, keep talking, I'll put something up over here. So, yeah? What was the point with the false feast of Jeroboam on the 15th day of the 8th month? The court, uh, connecting on Ezekiel's line, Jeff said. That right? that's, that's the midnight cry, because that date is repeated twice at the end of chapter 12 of 1 Kings, and then uh, the disobedience prophe prophecy to Jeroboam is, Oh, altar, altar. Uh, so there's, there's doubling in that history repeatedly. And uh, so that becomes a symbol of the midnight cry. And that took place in 977. So the question is, are there two events that make a panium? where we see Islam as well as uh, the King of the North versus the King of the South. But we will uh, show that there are indeed two separate way marks. Th that there are two different events. One connected to Islam, one connected to the King of the North versus King of the South. Uh, We have a date for Rafia, which is November 9th, 2019, which will be the close of probation uh, for the priests, at which point the binding off starts to separate the wise from the foolish priests. This will continue until the Penium uh, waymark has been reached, and after that, uh, yeah, we would have a church triumphant, triumphant with only wise priests. But we do not have a definite date for Panium. We, we do not know how long the binding off will last. But there have been some suggestions. And it has been suggested by Elder Jeff, like he's now drawing on the board, that Panium could possibly be in the year 2021, based on the line that he is now drawing. Uh, you mean from July 18th to 2021? Panium, yes. Panium, Panium would then period be... Of time, that period of time, but it would start on July 18th. Yes. Okay. The beginning of Panium would be July 18th. The end of Panium would be somewhere in 2021. Uh, uh, this is based on two structures. Uh, I mean, on the structure of two 2520s. But it seems very plausible that Panium is somewhere in the year 2021, which Jeff will explain shortly. But you're going to do the two structures? Or you want me to do the two structures? Those, those are the two lines that are on page 24. There's these two lines are the structures. And you're going to address them? Not if you uh, address them. No, I was going to do something different. Oh, okay. But um, let me give you at least one piece of logic. Um, we're seeing 30 years exactly from here to here, from November 9th with the bringing down of the Berlin Wall until November 9th, 2019. But from <coughs> December 25th, 1225 of 1991, <coughs> you have exactly 30 years would take you to December 25th, 2021. So this here, these two years, they're the, the demise of the Soviet Union, if, if I can say it that way. From 1989, when the wall comes down, until the, the Soviet Union is fully taken away. Now, I, I looked at a text this morning, and I began to answer it. 
And I never paid attention to, to Tessa's material after she was here last October. In one of, when she was here last October, I went through it one time, but I never followed along. But in the interim of that time period, I would hear people that were following her material speaking about the deadly wound of Russia being healed. What I understood from this morning's text is that she disagreed with what we had told about verse 40 in December of 2016. In December of 2016, we have taught that the Lord removed His hand from a foundational understanding that, this, that we had identified in the Time of the End magazine that the King of the South was the Soviet Union. And she disagreed with that, evidently, or at least she was putting it in a different expressing it differently. What she said is that Russia received a deadly wound in 1989, 1989-1991 time period and that when we get down to this here history what's happening with Russia is its deadly wound is healed. And if I'm reflecting what she taught correctly I want to say that I disagree with her. Uh, because if that's so then what we claimed the Lord removed His hand from in December of 2016 is not accurate. He really didn't remove His hand from that. She's saying that, that it was Russia receiving a deadly wound in the 1989-1991 time period and that its deadly wound is, is healed here. And therefore our claim that the Lord removed His hand in December 2016 from a foundational understanding that paralleled the Lord removing His hand in our history was inaccurate and in any case I don't know that you can actually claim that Russia received a deadly wound here. Russia is still standing. The Soviet Union is removed. That's what she's defining as a deadly wound. But I just, I'm putting that in place. I don't buy her terminology at minimum. 1991 takes us down here 30 years to 2021 and what we're seeing here is a two-year period of the demise of the Soviet Union. And in here, we're also seeing a two-year period of the demise of the Soviet Union, or the de demise of Russia, okay? The de demise of the Soviet Union here, demise of Russia here. And I admit that I'm, that I'm suggesting Russia wins this first battle, but it's just the, it's the beginning of the end for Russia, it may win this first battle against the United States, but ultimately it's removed here. Before we got to any of this understanding, we had come to understand that Panium was the midnight cry. And somewhere along the line, we came to understand that this waymark of Panium was also the waymark of Actium and that there was two battles which is consistent with the midnight cry because there's a doubling. This is a sea battle, this is a land battle. So what we're suggesting about Paneum is that on July 20... Pardon me? Yes. I'm glad that someone caught me on that. Everyone ready now? That I've got your attention? I saw one person starting to nod out and he's not nodding out anymore so it all worked, okay? What we're suggesting is here on July 18th, 2020 that this is Paneum, that it's the midnight cry and that you're going to have the retaliation of the United States towards Russia. And this will be not a singular blow to Russia, it will be a progressive fall of Russia. Because here, at the beginning of this time period, it's a progressive fall of the Soviet Union from 1989 to 1991. What carries on isn't the Soviet Union, it's Russia. And Russia here is going to go through a two-year progressive fall, even though it wins this first battle right here. The, the United States is going to give the decisive blow of Paneum, but it's progressive all the way to here because on December 25th, 
1991, we have the end of the Soviet Union, and we're looking to December 25th, 2021 as the end of Russia. But at this same point in time that the United States is going to retaliate against Russia, we expect another adversary to be Islam, which strikes the United States for the second time in fulfillment of Balaam's three strikes, or they strike Islam, Balaam strikes Islam the second time. But Balaam strikes Islam the second time because Islam is going to crash the United States foot into a wall. It's going to cripple the United States and we're arguing that the crippling of the United States is accomplished through a, a nuclear attack upon the United States and um, Odilio's heading to that information. So, there's two, this would, I, 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 I guess we'd have to say this is Russia, huh? Why would we say that Panium is Russia and that Actium is Islam? But that's what I'm saying. The reason that I'm saying that is that we know that Rafia are back here is between the United States and Russia and that Rafia and Panium are connected. So if this is Russia, United States, this has got to be Russia, United States. And if Actium is representing the second adversary in this history, then it's going to be Islam and it's going to be the act of Islam striking suddenly and unexpectedly with the nuclear bomb in the United States. Which will be a fulfillment of Genesis 16, 12. Trump, at this point, uh, the midnight cry, leading to the Sunday law somewhere over here, is going to go to the world and say, we need to deal with radical Islam. This is going to be Trump's rise to the leadership of the United Nations as the United States is concluding its time period as the sixth kingdom of Bible prophecy. Uh, and in this same history, the demise of Russia is going to be accomplished, probably the same way the de demise of the Soviet Union was accomplished over here through a progressive disintegration politically and socially. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be a hot war with Russia, even if it's a hot war with Islam. Um, so, one other line here, or a few lines. We have went over these before, and this one here, I definitely will need help from uh, Brother Stephen with. Preceding 1989, there was a 10-year proxy war between the United States and Russia, 1798. 1979. So from 1979 to 1989, there's a proxy war in an Islamic country. So I'm going to put Islam in here. That was Afghanistan, and it was between the King of the South and the King of the North, the United States and Russia. So we have identified that in 2011, a proxy war that takes place in an Islamic country, Syria, began. And we expect on the prophetic word that that will finally be concluded in 2021. And this proxy war that is still being carried out, particularly some of the, the main movements took place this past week when Trump the United States took out the head of ISIS, but at the same point in time, Turkey has went into Syria and gathered, gathered together its, its buffer zone and Russia's there. So we're saying that because this history here that leads to the collapse of the Soviet Union is a 10-year proxy war, that we should see a 10-year proxy war here that leads to the collapse of the Soviet Union 
with all the same characteristics, only here it isn't the Soviet Union, it's Russia. But we pointed to, and this is the part I need help with with Stephen, to a distress of nations that was going on in Millerite history, and I don't remember the name of the battles, the, the war, what's the category that, that they label this. And if, and if you don't know it, I'm just going to put distress of nations. Because that's what Luke 21, 25 says. And this was taking place in Millerite history. And it began in 1831 and ended in 1841. And it was 10 years. And once again, it was Islamic. Wasn't yeah. so much <coughs> proxy wars, but I guess maybe it was for the Europeans. I think it was over the Syrian region. It was over this same region here. Yeah, it was over Syria, and it was between Egypt and Turkey. Between Egypt and Turkey. So it has a name to it? Not that I, I can't Okay, I'm going to leave with distress of nations, because mm -hmm. the Europeans are getting very distressed about this ebb and flow of po this power struggle between Turkey, Egypt, that's taking place here. I think you can identify two years at each end, bookend, from 1831 to 1833, and then from 1839 to 41, 1839. Yeah, I don't know if I want to put it there. I was, I was doing a, a different pattern. Go ahead. So Tell that, us about the two years. So I think they were the, the most active period okay. of, the, of that 10 years. 1838 here is what Uriah Smith points to as the distress of nations in that history. Okay. So, yeah, maybe that, that could have been still continuing on between that period, yeah. but I think it's maybe... Could have been active. heating up after he said it. Mm -hmm. He's just pointing to it mm -hmm. as that, that point. So, what I'm putting this up here for is you have three witnesses, three lines that you can bring together, and... Back here, in, this isn't um, correct on the, the width that it should be, but in 1838, you have Josiah Litch making a prediction about the collapse of the Ottoman Empire that's going to be fulfilled in 1840. All right, so let me try to do it a little bit more symmetrical. I want you to see this. Acknowledging Stephen's historical input that the height of activity was the two years at the beginning and two years at the end, I want to put this 1838 over here. 1838 is two things. It's where Uriah Smith marks the distress of nations but it's where Josiah Litch makes his prediction that's going to come to pass two years later. And two years later for Josiah Litch was 1840. But Josiah Litch is going to give the prediction twice. He's going to give it in 1838 and then he's going to give it again in 1840 itself, ten days before the event of August 11th. So in the story of Josiah Litch, you have an initial prediction, and then you have a fine-tuning of the prediction that takes place just before it happens, ten days before it happens. So, here, in 2018, based upon, you have those over there? No, based upon stuff that's on the other side of that board, based upon October 13th, 2018, from the, the second witness of November 9th, it, we came to understand this event here, Paneum, would take place 252 days after Raphia. And we put it in place on November 4th, 11-4, 2018, that this would take place, this 
Battle of Paneum would take place on July 18th, 2020. And this two-year history of Josiah Litch prediction corresponds to this two-year history. And the point is, one of the points are, that we believe that here at the Midnight Cry is when the Levites begin to respond to the message. There's something that goes on in this history that is an ensign for the Levites before you get to Paneum, but when the prophecy is fulfilled, then they respond in a big way. And so too it was in the story of Josiah Litch. When the prophecy came to pass, 200,000 people join with the Millerites. And why did they join with the Millerites? Yes, because they seen the prophecy come to pass, but they were convicted that the rules of prophetic interpretation adopted by Miller and his associates were accurate. So in spite of all the outcry against time setting, we're suggesting that in this history here, this movement here is going to identify this event and we're going to take a lot of flack from it because so did Josiah Litch in 1838. But when it finally comes to pass, then the Levites are going to respond the same way the 200,000 did in the time of Litch. So what we've come to understand is, right here, we have a 180 day period of time. It's connected with the last President of the United States, um, Donald Trump. When you get to July 18th, 2020, he will have been president for exactly three and a half years. And this last half year, this last 180 days, begins on July 20th, January, January 20th, 2020, the inauguration day. <coughs> and in, in so doing, it takes this 252 day period and it breaks it into two periods of time. One of the witnesses for Trump is Xerxes, who has a 180-day feast where he gathers the leadership of his kingdom together, 127 provinces, I believe, to go to war with Greece. Here we're suggesting that after the loss of Raphia, Trump is going to bring together the leadership of the world that's going to come into an alliance with him to respond to Greece, to Russia. And over this period of time, Russia is going to get removed from history. And here, the threefold union with Trump being the head of the ten kings comes together between the beast dragon and the false prophet. This history here, close of probation, November 9th, close of probation for priests. 72 is a symbol of the 144,000. This would represent, perhaps, the binding off of the priests from beginning to end in this number 72. But number 72 is also <clears throat> the history of the collapse of the Soviet Union from 1917 to 1989 is 72 years. So this 72 years can also be intimating the end of Russia just as it represents the end of the Soviet Union here. So whether it's the 144,000 that's being typified by this 72, or it's a symbol that this is the conclusion of Russia, the same way it was a symbol of the, the time period that the Soviet Union reigned is still open for more light. So... That, we've, are, we've mentioned most of that before. I'm not sure that's exactly what you want me to lead into, but I'll turn it over to you, and you only have a few minutes. Sorry, can I just... Yep. <coughs> just I just thought a, a few ideas. Okay. Normally, uh, we associate Raphia with Boston, and then Panium with Exeter. Is that what you're going to do? Should I put it on the board? No, no, no. I'm just... Uh, I'm okay. So, uh, we also identify there was uh, a camp meeting called Concord. Yep. In between that. So, uh, just maybe it's just an idea if we're, we're foreseeing 
them 180 days beginning with uh, Okay, so you're zero, saying zero, yeah. this could be Boston, mm -hmm. midnight, July 21st, 1844, this would be Concord. Because he's gathering the leaderships of the world to, I guess there's a, coming together. Concord being a word about unity. Yes. To <coughs> this Russia. would be Exeter. Yes. Which is the midnight cry. I think you can also connect Concord. They're all through the midnight cry, but that's where the, yes. it's the power. Yeah, it's the development of the midnight cry. <coughs> yes. And you can also connect Concord to Josiah Litch, because it was on the 1st of August that Josiah Litch fine-tuned yes. that, that prophecy. And it was the 1st of August when the, the Concord Camp meeting was as well. Really? Okay, so th this is, that's really cool. August 1st. Okay. Could be a symbol of the 8th one as well, the 8th day, the first, the first day of the 8th month. 80. And then 8, 18 as well, if you want to switch it, the beginning of 180. And it's 10 days before the 11th of, uh, of August. So, like a, a testing it's a, it's, time. It's a tenth of 180 as well. Okay, now you just rattled <laughs> off a bunch of them, but let, let's put them put him in place. Tell me that again. <clears throat> we're, we're dealing with August 1st, and you're saying August 1st was the date of Concord, mm -hmm. but it's also the day that Josiah Litch fine tuned, August 1st, 1840, that he fine tuned his prediction to predict August 11th, 1840. So we see that connection here at this way mark, 72 days in, 180 days before. You're saying Concord, if we're going Boston, Concord, Exeter, is representing the Concord being a word for unity, would be representing the unity that comes into the priests here and the unity that Trump is bringing about with the world leaders after and before. It speaks both ways. And now, tell me about August 1st. The number. <coughs> Just as, yes, associating it with the eighth day. Sorry, the first day of the eighth month. Or, For, the, or the eighth 18, day. Or this. You're yes. saying it can go either way. Yes. So if it's 18, it speaks to the 180. Mm -hmm. If it's 81, it speaks to the priest. midnight. Yeah. Midnight is symbolized by 81. Yeah. And in this history, do we have a midnight? We're saying this is midnight. We're, and sometimes we'll say this whole history is midnight leading to the midnight cry. But is there a midnight in this history that has to do with Islam? Y yes, there is. Uh, Muhammad too wakes up at midnight and says that I want to take Constantinople and he reaches out to the bomb maker to make it happen. And it's going to happen over here. So what, what were your other 81s? <clears throat> well, I was, I was just associating Josiah Lech's prophecy. The fine-tuning was 10 days um, before the 11th of August. And okay. so you, you're seeing that, uh, that 18, that first day of the 8th month, is, is like, uh, it's like a tenth of the 180. As well, so you just see maybe a number ten there, in there, as well as like a ten, which can mean a test as well. Mm -hmm. But this is a testing time. In between eleven nine and well, here in this history, it's ten days. It's right down here in eighteen forty on August first. Josiah Litch determines August 11th. So in this dark line is where those 10 days are in the story of Josiah Litch. But we're feeding this information back up here and saying our fine-tuning probably comes here when the dirt brush man casts the jewels into the casket and it brings all these implications to right here. And the 10 allows us to take the 180 and make it 18. What's 18? It's 8-1. Yeah, it was both ways. <laughs> Could be a lot. Of yeah, it could be a lot. Think. Okay. <laughs> to left. 
and you, do, you, you can't get this in five minutes. Uh, I, I can try to finish this. No, you don't have to. If you can't, we can take it up next time. But go ahead, if you want. You want to go for next time, McKinney? Hello? Here, le give him, w w let him finish this so we cut it off here. Do you have more to add? Go ahead and, and do it, even if we take a little bit of extra time to just get to this mm -hmm. point. Yeah, we are looking at uh, establishing a date <coughs> for Panium because uh, during the study we, we didn't have any date for Panium. But Jeff made a suggestion that Panium could be located in 2021 by these two lines. Uh, we see the line of the Millerites. Uh, sorry, line of the Millerites over here. No, no. no. no it's on right. Over here. Yeah. yeah, sorry. That's the chiasm of the 2520 that the Millerites were governed by. Right. right. Where you're pointing. And this is a parallel chiasm to our history. Exactly. And the point of Jeff was that Hiram Edson discovered the 2520. 1856, and if they would be aware of that, they could have predicted 1863. I can tell you. I know what yeah. you wanted me to do. He asked me to do this, and I, w I was unfamiliar with... I didn't remember why, he's, why he was asking me. That's pretty much what I said, but... In the chiasm that begins in 742 and ends in 1863, here's where they, where they reject the 2520. But in 1856, Hiram Edson has seven articles that are not finished okay, on the 2520, and it's those articles that when they're read correctly, you can discover this chiasm. I don't think Hiram Edson knew that chiasm, but the information was there. But this creates a seven-year period in between 1856 and 1863 where they're setting aside this light. Hiram Edson is the messenger of the 2520, and he's a messenger because back here in 1844, he's the one that's given the vision of Christ moving from the, the holy to the most holy. He's a chosen messenger. Um, James and Ellen White named their son after him. They had that kind of respect for him. So he was the chosen messenger of the 2520, that they could have received the light on, and if we took the time to look at the temple cleansings in the Millerite history, we can show you the structure that allows you to identify 1863 as the coming of Christ. Please remember this little thing that we're doing here, because sometime next week, Stephen's going to get up and he's going to do his 2300 day, his 1844 day, prophecy from October 22nd, 1844 to November 9th, 1849 and then he's going to bring it down to our history. And in that scenario, it shows that in 1849, they could have had their characters ready to finish the work, and that's why this 1850 chart is produced. It's the outreach for the 11th hour workers, but they're sliding into their Laodicean condition. As Brother Daniel put in the record yesterday, in 1852, she's already saying they're in a Laodicean condition, even if it was before that. She at least marks it in 1852. So when they get to 1856, they're going into their deeper into their Laodicean condition, and seven years later, seven articles unfinished on the seven times, and then seven years to get it right, and seven years later, they set aside the 2520, introduce the counterfeit image of jealousy chart, and this begins the repeat of this chiastic structure only for us, it's 7 years instead of 19, and it's 25 instead of 46. So when you do a parallel chiastic structure for our history using 7 years instead of 19, you get to 1863, uh, and 25 years takes you to 1888, uh, but this first 126 years takes you to 1989, the time of the end, paralleling the time of the end for the Millerites. And the reason that we mark 1863 and 1888, this is the beginning of the apostasy, 
this is the end of that generation. This is where the apostasy now has led them into generation number two, where they're into spiritualism. They have rejected the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, the messengers, the Holy Spirit. And this begins the other 126 that takes us to 2014, where there's so much controversy. But this chiasm is being repeated 25 years from 1863 to 1888. 1844 was the opening, I'm going to put door, okay, the door is closed to the holy place, it's open to the most holy place, pointing to 2014, in 2014 then you're going to see the history of 1844, because the closed door is here, and you're going to see the history of 1888. Because Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning and this 20, 126 years began there. So when you see this chiastic structure, you're at the same place that the Millerites were at in 1856. You're at the place here in 2014 whether you're going to accept this chiastic structure. In 1856, they were at the point to whether they could accept this chiastic structure. And they reject it. They go off into the rebellion, and what they're rejecting is time setting, because here Sister White says there is no more time setting. But we, when we discovered this, we realized we were, now we realize we were time setting. So when we get to 2014, we're being confronted with the same issue they were, so to speak, and seven years later takes you to 2021. And 2021 is among other things, 1863, it is the second coming of Christ, and it is Paneum. And that was put in the record quite some time ago. I, I forgot what you were getting at when you asked me to do that. So, go ahead. That's all I wanted to say. You have something? Um, just going back to this year, 1979. Yes. The war actually began on the 25th of December. Really? Brezhnev gave the order, I think, on the 24th to go in, but they actually, the tanks actually didn't start going in until the 25th. And so you have like a 42-year period for that whole uh, line. And that equates From to here um, to here is 42 years? Yes, or it equates to 504 months, which is... 252 times 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, so from 1979, mm -hmm. 1225, to 2021, 1225, is 42 years. Mm -hmm. And that is how many months did you say? 504. 504 months. And if you what? It's uh, 252, it's 252 times 2. It's 352? No, 252. Two, 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 two. Times 2, okay. Yeah. Divided by 2 equals two, five, two. 25, 20, 252. Mm. Which is this history here from Raphia to Penium, and it's a scattering, it's a 2520. So this here, from here to here, is the scattering of the Soviet Union in Russia. I guess, is that what you're saying? And 42 years is, 42 is a symbol of the Dark Ages, 42 months. Wow. Did you know that before we started here today, or was that something you calculated here? No, something I'd already looked at. It's just when you put it up 1979 there, I thought I'd throw it in. So this is, December 25th is a, on three witnesses has to do, this one it has to do with Russia or the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. Russia or the Soviet Union. This one's got to be Russia or the Soviet Union. It's, it's got to be their demise. So if they're getting defeated in Paneum, then this proves that the war against Russia is progressive. This proves it here, too. It's progressive from 1989 to 1991, 
and you could probably throw in those. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, it's, this is World War Three that we're entering into, for sure. Um, just another thing. Okay. Um, it's from 1979 to 2001 is 22 years. Yep. And that equates to 264 months. Yeah. And that means? No, so two, 264. 264. Mm -hmm. Which is a symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. So it's connecting 1979 to, to the strike of 9-11. The, it's, it's June 20 what? No, no, it's the 26th day of the fourth month. Okay, which is? That's in the 2020, it's July 18. In the Gregorian. Oh, okay. That's July 18th. Mm -hmm. So it's connecting 1979, Islam, with 2001. Over here. Mm -hmm. So it's tying Islam into this whole scenario. And it's well, tying it in it's, it's to tying, July, tying July in 9, 18th. Tying in 9-11, in a sense. Yep. Right here, let's say, 9-11, mm -hmm. 2001. So it's not exactly 264 months, you know, the MDS, because it's September. You're going from December to September. But taking this just the symbol as a year, yep. you, can, you can maybe tie it in as a... As a, as a, like a a symbol, a two six four. Okay, now you. I mean, I that part, the very last thing you said. Okay. He said the months is not perfect months, so he's he's taking. Uh, Just a year, as a symbol. Yeah, a year and dividing it by twelve months. He's not getting into the days part of it. Mm -hmm. You got that. Shall we pray? You want to pray? We'll do it. Okay. Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for this opportunity to study these things together and help us to understand these things, help us to see what is uh, into the future in short notice. Please bless us with uh, the letter rain. Help us to understand the symbology and the meaning of all these numbers. Help us to prepare for the common crisis, for the close of probation. Help us to prepare our characters. Bless us with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we need to do the work. And please bless these remaining few days Help us to gain further insights. Help us to learn what we have to do, Lord, and that we can present these things and be sure that you are guiding us in all these things. We ask you all these, th these things in Jesus' name. Amen.